G'day, I'm Neil, and my handle is Wiley11. Um, I'm just going to put my disclaimer here. Uh, whatever I do and say on these videos is well-intentioned and well-meaning advice. Uh, I accept no liabilities whatsoever for any disclosures. If you take some advice or act on something that I'm saying on these videos, you do so entirely at your own risk. Um, you know, I'm doing it based on my experience. These videos are my attempt to give back to YouTube for the help and assistance that YouTube has given me. So once again, you follow along or follow advice from these videos entirely at your own risk. Okay, and if you're not happy to do that, click this off and off you go. Because this is purely my attempt to give back to YouTube uh, as I said, for the help and advice that I have received out of YouTube. So this is just my little attempt to give back. If you're happy to follow along at your own risk, uh, buckle up, sit in. Uh, let's get into it. Hello and welcome to 2019. Um, I've had a bit of a break over New Year's. Um, I set a goal to clean the place up. I got kind of about halfway through that. Um, I cleaned up my table and I've cleaned up, as you can see, the tool kit's all cleaned up and there's things been put away. But um, I got a phone call from the company I had the temporary contract from before Christmas and they said, could I give them another couple of weeks? So back at work. Hey. So that's good news. Um, we're going to be doing some uh, some short jobs between now and the end of the month. And I did set a goal to finish off Project Fluke Meter. Project Fluke Meter. Now what's going on here, that's the... Um, that's the, the, I call it polarized film that goes over the display. That's the power supply. I found online a portable battery. This is a, I think, nickel metal hydride. It's an old meter, and this is a replacement battery for it. So I didn't go with LiPo because I didn't believe that the um, charging system in it can deal with LiPo. So it hasn't got lithium, you know, lithium system. This all came about because of this. Which, as you can see, has a beautiful round mark in it. What happened was one of the students at the university put his coffee cup on the display and destroyed the display. And the university got quotes to get it repaired. And the cheapest quote they had was two thirds the cost of a new unit. So they turfed it. And later that night, I went and approached them and said, well, can I take that? And they said, yep, it's only going in the bin. So I ordered, I got the filament off, got the filament off, and ordered a new filament. And that's what came. <laughs> Just a tad smaller than the one I needed. <laughs> But wonderfully, I got in touch with the guy and said, look, I screwed up. I, I thought I'd ordered the right one. Obviously, I clicked the wrong button on your website or whatever. He responded. Now, I'm not sure if my address came up there. I might need to do a bit of snippy snipping. I'll put my hand over everything. That came. So, we got our filament. 
we got our battery, got our charger, found a charger for it, works. And in here, in the rest of this box, we got our flute meter. Now the current problem with the flute meter is this screen. And the problem with the screen We have to get this out. It's all in pieces. The problem with the screen, you might be able to see, is it's got cracks in it. But the cracks, I'm not sure, are of any consequence. I'm just removing this ribbon cable from it. Not sure why I'm trying to remove this ribbon cable from it because I, even if I do remove the ribbon cable from it, there's another bit of wire. I'm losing bits. I'm gonna have to put it back in the box, guys. Yeah, I found my steam pressure valve that I ordered. I don't know what it's doing in this project box. This is ready, I think, to have a crack at. The problem is I've got lines through the display. I don't know that the cracks are impacting me because I think this guy's smashed his coffee, you know, he's done that one. He smashed his coffee down on the screen and then left it there. Oh, they're, they're definitely cracks. I've got no question about that, but if they don't impact the display, I'm going to live with it. If they do impact the display, I'm still going to live with it. We're going to find out because um, I'm going to use the heat off my um, SMD, my soldering rework station here. I've got a heat gun there, as you can see, and um, surface mount. Um, thing. I'm going to hit the edges with the heat and clamp them up again to try to reactivate the glue to stop the lines going through the display. That's the current plan. Now if that display is toast, I'm going to have to see if I can find a second hand display. And that's going to be hard because these are very old. But very very reliable instruments that guy like the guy that's done this you can still see around this screen you can still see it's got the mark from where he put his coffee cup down and the crack where he slammed it down too hard but the display works I can turn the unit on and get a signal back on and see things, but there are lines running through the display. And I can only see things when I put the polarized film over the top of the display. If you if you don't have the polarized film that's been removed from here, you know, um, you don't see crap. Now that could be because those cracks are on the back, and I'm not sure if they're going to impact anything or not. And you know, we, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. A lot of stuff in here. What's this? GPRS. That's oh, that's yet another project piece I found. How did they end up in this box? Wrong, wrong place for it entirely. This is for building a um, um, a LoJack system. It's a little GPRS, takes a um, SIM card, you put it in there, and uh, you put it in a box with a battery, and it can SMS your phone where, you, where your car or your bike is. Little Wojak system. Pretty cool. This is for a steam engine. 
another project that's coming up this year. So welcome to 2019. There's a bit of good news. Today I'm going to be working on this. I'm going to try to recover this screen. If I can't do it, well, I have to find a new screen. I'm not throwing the unit out because it's um, $3,000 worth of, well, when it was new, it was $3,000. They're probably still worth $3,000. It's a very, very good oscilloscope, and it's portable, and it's a fluke, and it's reliable, and I can't remember the gigahertz on it, but it's pretty big. It's got a fairly significant um, range, it, it, you know, like it, most, most oscilloscopes only go megahertz. This goes into gigahertz. Oh, I'm not kidding you. Um, it's a fluke one, two, three. And it's really old. Okay, I am kidding you. Gigahertz. Uh, I'm not sure what its top range is, but it's higher than most oscilloscopes. I've got a feeling it is gigahertz, but I'll find out. And I'll, I'll give you some accurate things on that for those of you who are purists and don't like being spoken to like that. There's quite a few of you out there, and good luck, more power to you. But you understand what I'm saying? This is a high quality instrument. And it deserves to live again. And if I can get it back to peak condition, which is what I'm hoping I can do. I'm just going to throw those back in the box for the moment. I'm going to throw those in my project box. Over here. It's got to go back in the box too. Oh. I've got enormous respect for people who look after their tools. The guy that did that to this tool deserves, you know, I can tell you he got a job. I don't, I didn't get a job out, that guy got a job out of uni. I didn't get one. Can't wait till he takes the boss's $2 million very sensitive instrument, puts his coffee on it and spills it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be a good day. <laughs> There's no respect for anything, that guy. He really doesn't. He's smart. He's really, really smart. And, you know, but he just doesn't have respect for people and he doesn't have respect for the tools he uses. And uh, it's, it's going to cost you a fortune to feed him. But he got a job. Got a job. Me, well, I respect everything and everyone, even your right to complain about the way I talk to you. There you go. Um, New Year's. It's hot. I, um, I've got a singlet on. It's oppressively hot. The heat here, uh, I've got a... I don't think so much the heat, the problem is the humidity. It's, it's really heavy. Um, I've got a thermometer behind me. I'm just going to go have a look at it. It's actually saying, as you can see... 28.8 degrees so it's not oppressively hot in terms of hot but it is oppressively hot in terms of humid it's really muggy and sticky this little thermometer was something I ordered on eBay it's a, it's a probe one so it's got a probe you put your probe wherever you want for example I chuck that in my ear and <laughs> it'll give me my temperature Chuck it somewhere else, it'll give you your internal core temperature. By holding it, you can see I pushed it up a degree. I'll let it go again, it'll go back to where it belongs. Oh, it's gone up to 30 odd degrees. I've moved the probe out from, from the cause of insulating wire, and it's gone up to over 30 degrees. So, yeah. Can now see, it says 30. I thought it was hotter than that. I, I would have put it at about 34, 35 degrees, but it's 30 degrees heat. It's humid and muggy, and that's what, what I'm trying to do. Boy, wearing a singlet only. Uh, I'm pretty exhausted, but... E Tragic news coming. Tragic. Hang on. 
still 35 cents. I've still been able to um, find them for $3 around the place, and I buy a box of 10, so I, I can keep, you know, 30 bucks worth, so if I get 10 weeks worth, so I can still enjoy a 35 cent cup of coffee. Horrible news. My favorite coffee cup with the chocolate, Mrs. Wiley kaboomed it. She broke it. And I was like, no! I love that cup. It, it was just the right size for your coffee. It kept your coffee and it, it had a good feel to it. And you could, you know, and I, I didn't want the chocolate written on it. Yeah, it's gone. It's, it's had it. She smashed it. She tells me it wasn't deliberate, but I don't think she ever did like that cup, but I always did. So now I've got the dad cup from, from my son. That's, that's my cup. It's a good cup, right? But it's not the one I liked. You know, it didn't ha it doesn't have that same feel to it that I like. When you, when you have a coffee, it's got to have, like, it's kind of a bit too wide at the top and the slope, the slope of the, and the handle, don't, look, so you see how much handle you got, it's not sort of cradling, you know, your hand. Coffee's still good. I'm going to have to think about it. You know, the dad cup sort of can come out for, for now, but I'm going to have to think about it. And the little camera, this little, this little camera. It uh, took a tumble the other day, so I hope I haven't broken it. So I was filming some stuff to try to film me cleaning up. My, um, my little tripod here, I didn't have it secured properly, and it fell off the tripod. That wasn't good. So anyway. Right, yeah, so 16 minutes of footage there. I might have to review it and see if I need to edit any of it. I'll catch you guys uh, with Project Fluke. Hey, and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be doing Project Fluke meter. There's been a couple of weeks break between the last recording and this one. Uh, it's because I got myself a little temporary job and it was great to be working again. But I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm, I'm totally wrecked as a result of working in that job. And um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm tired as. Haven't really got going yet. Um, it's hot. I've got my singlet on again because it's so hot. I can't. I can't really stomach wearing a shirt at the moment. It's, it's just humid and it's energy sappingly hot. Um, so what we want to try to achieve today is we, we want to try to achieve fixing the screen. We want to try to, if we can get it put back together, that would be a bonus. But, um, you know, I've got to spend a couple of hours on it. And I'm going to be uh, showing you guys what I'm doing. Now, the thing about working um, where we are is that we're putting a film on a screen. And you don't want any dust. You you, you so we've got to have the window closed. We can't have dust blowing around. And there's a bit of a trick to getting the dust off your screen, which I saw a young girl doing in the shopping center when she was putting an iPhone screen together. And I thought that's a great idea, and uh, I'm going to use that trick to get the dust off my screen. So, um, e guess what? Yeah, 35 cent coffee. Hang on. Now there's tragic news. Mrs. Wiley broke my favourite coffee cup. It's gone. But my 35 cent coffees remain and I'm now on the hunt for a brand new favourite coffee cup. It's not these ones. These ones are good but they're not great. My son gave me a, a, a Father's Day with Dad on it and it's a lovely big mug but it too is, is good but not great. I, I need a great coffee cup. And when I find it, um, I'll let you know that I haven't found it yet. I've been looking for a couple of weeks now. So, um, 
what we've done is we've closed up the windows a bit to keep the dust out of it um, and we're going to get stuck into project flute uh, flute meter now this is a one two three it's got a black and white screen and it's an oscilloscope come ammeter multimeter um, gadget and it's completely portable and it's it's got a lovely range it's it's um, you know I can't remember whether it's in I know it's a, a huge number I think it might go up to up to gigahertz but don't quote me on that it's the fluke one two three it's old it's really old it's you know and it's probably not worth repairing which is why it got chucked out but I'm gonna repair it and um, it, well it's old and and worthless in terms of that it's not old and worthless in terms of what I need it for because uh, I can't afford three thousand bucks so um, you know hopefully I can get this going and I'll get myself a fluke mover for next to nothing um, I think it's cost me to date uh, the battery was thirty five dollars for the new battery and the film was I think ten bucks and um, that had to come out from England and most of that was postage so interesting but um, I can't think of spending anything else on it so for about 60 bucks 70 bucks give, give or take you know um, there's probably some other things I've bought which I can't think of at the moment but it's under 100 bucks for sure and I'll get myself something that's worth two and a half to three thousand and uh, I'll be happy with that Stay tuned, uh, let's get stuck into Project Fluke. Hey, check it out. 35 cent coffee coming down. Well, welcome back. Um, it's hot. Um, it's overcast, it's trying to rain but it hasn't. It's muggy, it's oppressively hot and I'm sweating like a horse. All that aside, um, we're here today back on Project Flute. It's a couple of days after the last video was shot um, where we got prepped up and ready to do things. However, um, I've changed tack a little bit um, and I'm going to cut over to the other camera and we're going to show you why I've changed tack and uh, what's going on with it. So, um, I got, oh cripes, I don't know why these glasses don't sit level. They, go, <laughs> they don't. You can see they sit crooked. Let's see why. Let's see if that does anything. There you go, they're level. <laughs> uh, buddy. These are really cheap glasses, they're reading glasses. Um, I've been doing some work, um, doing some research. Uh, the reason I had to um, drop the project and do something else was that an opportunity arose and I had to take advantage of that and it's now three days later. So that's what's going on. <sighs> that building is distracting me. It's out the window there. Since you last saw it, um, another four floors have gone on to the top. And it looks as though they've moved the crone up another three floors. So it looks as though they're going up again. They're already selling the lower floor apartments and they're still building the top of the building. Modern building methods. Who can tell? It's, a, it's an eyesore. It's an absolute monstrosity. I hate the thing. But it must have some pretty freaking good views because um, it's blocked out our views. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> so they've got some good views of the Broadwater and I'd say they've got good views all the way out to the hinterland behind them. So they'll be pretty uh, prestigious apartments and they'll be highly, highly desirable. So it's going up and up and up and up and up. And I don't know. I can see they've put the central piece up another three floors. 
so they're going to put another three floors on top of where they are at least but it'll probably go up again so you, you won't see that central piece that's their lift and services that's the core of the building that'll go up higher than the rest of the building and that's how they build them but they've already extended the crane the, the crane's gone up as well and the back crane's gone up as well so they've put them up in the last two days it's very distracting there's a lot of noise comes from it all right all that said um, we're here to talk about fluke um, we've changed tech I'm going to do the screen first uh, if I can put that screen back into good working condition I'm going to reassemble the unit and fit the new battery I've got for it and see if it'll take a charge and if we get to that point I'm going to call it done so that's the tech uh, the change is that I'm not putting the film across it. What I'm doing is using the offcuts of film uh, to, I'm using that to eliminate the lines in the screen. So we're going to be doing that. Um, and hopefully we can get the lines out of the screen. And uh, if we can do that, we can put it all back together, put the film on it and uh, put the battery in and that's the end of project fluke she's finished and i'll be very pleased to see that happen because it's been hanging around for a while uh all right so i'm going to stop this video and uh go over to the other camera all right i'm going to try that again I'll put it up here Right, oh, so testing part two, testing part two. Um, you should be able to see this screen is completely filthy. It's got scratch marks on it. Now, in your travels, sometimes you meet people that are complete wankers, you know, complete idiots you don't want to deal with. And every so often, I mentioned to you that I, I got in touch with the guy that I ordered the wrong size thing and, and he sent me. Well, I've opened it. And Steve, as you can see, sent me a note. What a nice bloke. Now, I'm pretty sure he sells this, um, this film on the internet as a business. So... I'm going to give him a shout out. I'll see if I can find uh, what his link is. Or he sold via eBay. I'm going to give him a shout out. And I'll, if I can find the link on eBay to his shop, I'll, uh, I'll post it. But if not, um, this guy's in the UK. He bent over backwards actually to, to help me out here because, you know, when I corresponded with him a little bit, he, he found out the story about things going on with me and he, he just sent me that. Uh, you know, he didn't have to wasn't it wasn't his fault it was mine and that's what he's done so um pretty happy that he's he's come good with that and um you know nice bloke and deserves a shout out so steve i'll give you a shout out i'll see if i can put a link in the description or somewhere to your to your website right let's get on with it okay so we're recording Project Fluke. Here's where we left off with our horrible piece and our new piece. And Steve, thank you so much for that note. Um, I'll try to work out where Steve's eBay page is because other people will probably have need of this film. It's a polarized film and uh, he's done a good thing a good turn there and um, if I can put a link to his eBay site I'll give you guys a link okay so let's start with prep prep essentially I need to cut this film to fit this screen here so in cutting the film you need a pair of scissors that's going to do the job properly 
Now the good thing about me is that I always maintain my gear. So it doesn't matter what pair of scissors I pick up, they're going to be sharp and they're going to work. Cut your hair with him. I'm not looking to cut my hair. I'm looking to cut this piece of this piece of film. This is the sort of thing you get one shot at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the guillotined edge, this one, against the guillot against the edge of the glass. and give myself a reference point to cut to. So this is the guillotine edge here. Now if I line that up on the glass, my reference point and I'm using my probe right I don't want to move this too much I want to give myself right on that edge and there it is right there now all I've done is pierce the, pierce the film. I'm going to double check that. Got my straight edge on my straight edge, and that's perfect. So now what I need to do is I need to get that to this corner exactly using that that dot which will give me an exact right angle. Now again, don't really know what I'm doing. I do have a guillotine. I bought one. I'm going to move this out of the road. Just a moment. Hey! <laughs> Scored! <laughs> Didn't know that was there. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, if I if I don't hide that, that won't be there. <laughs> Happy about that. Bit of cash line under the mat. Ah, get my guillotine down. Once again, it's maintained beautifully and wonderfully. There's my reference point. It's my straight edge. I think I need to do this the other way up. But I can't. It's got to be straight on that. So what I've done is I've put my finger there and I've butted the butted the the film up against my finger. And I don't know how well you can see. But over here is the mark. And it's right on the cut. So, let's give it a crack. You can see I hit hit it exactly, and this is our 90 degree angle. I'm going to check it. I'm going to put it in the guillotine and check it for 90 degrees. Mm. 
it's about a millimeter out. So I'm gonna just hold it up this this end. It should give me a an exact cut at 90 degrees. Yeah, it's miles out. There's my right angle there. See this is my right angle. If I put it up on the on the guillotine for you guys, you can see it's not exactly I mean that top edge is beautiful. It's this edge here I'm not happy with. But it is at 90 degrees, it's just got a slight little bend in it. I can I can live with that. I can't live with this, so I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square up the whole film. Let's just let's just get it square. See how square that one is. That is exactly square. All right, lines up exactly in that square. It's perfect. I think that's the go. I think I'll just square it up first. Yeah, it's not cutting exactly straight for me, but it is exactly square on the corners. Okay, happy with that. I'll, do, I'll use the scissors, put the guillotine away. Alright, let's get put away. Back where it belongs. I wish I had another place for this other than right at the very top. But I don't. So here's our basically squared off piece of piece of film. Here are our discards over there. Here's your old piece. Which we could now use as a template for the new piece. We're only going to get one shot at this. What I don't like about this old piece is it's all bent over and whatever. What I do like about it is it worked for at least 15 years. So, let us put this on the glass.
What I'm going to do is I'm using my fingernail to mark that corner. Should give me a nice little mark. See that? Now I'll do the same at the edges. I'm going to use my fingernail just to mark it. So we've got our marks here, here, and there. Now it's a matter of how straight can I cut. I don't know is the answer to that. So I want to use that guillotine again. One shot. I don't know, I, I guess I've got to trust the tool. The guillotine's there for a reason. So trust the tool. Put this out of the road again. Bring the guillotine down. We've got our marks. No guts, no glory. Let's get it back. Oh, that wasn't a very good idea actually. I've got to use the tool to get it. too tall for me to reach it. I pushed it up there. I'm going to put those scissors away for next time. There it is. I got it. There it is. We bring it back. And turn it that way. So you guys can see it. Marks right. Now some of you are probably screaming at the camera. Don't do it. Well, guess what? I'm doing it. No guts, no glory. Let's just get it done. We'll worry about everything else afterwards. Now, there's our mark. We're straight on the top. There's a mark. It's on the marks. Oh no, here goes. It's hit the marks. Check it for square. Looks pretty good. Good enough for me. Oh no. Here's our marks. Gotcha. There it is. Done. Audio. Let's put this away. Ugh. Next time I need it. It's a long way up to get it. These are always useful, these things, so don't throw them away. Put them, for, put them away for a rainy day. These ones are no good. They can go in the bin straight away. So what I'm going to do real quick here, so I'm going to have a bit of a clean up before I put everything back. So just bear with me. Got some debris here. As you can see, I hate working in pig stores. I really do. Got to be clean about your jobs. 
too. I spilled a bit down on the carpet. I have a little mat under my desk, my work desk. It's a catch all. Put this away. I'm basically clean. Put my mat back. Now that's a cork mat. It's there to catch. Stop me from burning the crap out of my work surface. I fixed up this too. Got some blades for it. Bring the job back in. Bring our film back in. There it is. And that's about as perfect as it's going to get. Okay, I'm not going to put it on just yet because we've got lines. And because we've got lines, we're going to plug it all in. And we're going to use heat. And we're not going to use the good piece. We're going to use one of our offcuts. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me a minute. Okay, so I'm back at it. And what I've done is I've just set this... Um, set this up what I've decided to do is use this leftover film as my um, I've already cut this piece to size now where those scratches have come from in the film but they've come from somewhere so it's been bent at some point in time I think we've got a couple of pieces of film here anyway that's what I'm saying polarized film somewhere else. I've got screws and whatnot there. There's some stuff has gone missing from my little kit case, so I'll have to find them. But here you can see I've got the charger. So I can provide power to it. I'm going to just plug this in to power. Power over here. Power in a couple of places actually, but I think I'll put the power over here where it's near it needed. I'm going to plug it in here. Right, so we've got power. Just going to bring it in plug it in and see what we get when we push the on button well, at the moment we're not getting very much now you can still see this burn mark here but I'm not worried about that because what I'm looking to get is some kind of display plugged in correctly there we go now you see we've got we've got a screen and see all our lines and when we touch up here we get fewer lines or more lines see as I run my hand along there, oh, it turned itself off. Turn it back on again. Now, I don't really mind that I'm getting lines. It's not happy about something. I don't mind that I'm getting lines. I can still use the unit. Okay, it doesn't like me pressing down on this. What worries me, you see all these cracks? They're what worry me. There's definitely a burn in the screen, that's that's a given. I'll get rid of this one. There 
it's showing itself down it's not happy about something and it's probably got getting a short signal or something doesn't surprise me if I can get it to turn on and stay on yeah it's not happy What I need to do is find out is there a point. Oh dear. Well that's done something terrible. You can see where the, the damage has been done to this thing. And it definitely does need a new screen. No question. Now I don't care about the lines, I don't care about the retinal burn in the screen. I guess if I if I just use it, I, I can get away with it. I think there is an external display feature for this thing. See, as I run my hand across there, I can create more lines, but can I get rid of lines? Yes, I can. So, we're going to try to get rid of those lines. That's the next thing we're going to try to do. Now I've got a heat gun here, it's got a lot of heat coming off it, and it's working. But what I've got to do with this heat, is I've got to put a fine nozzle on it. Now that's still producing heat, I don't know why. turned on at the moment, I'm just going to turn it off, there's a switch at the back. That put out a lot of heat. You can see, if I push there, I can get rid of those lines. See that? So what I'm going to do is apply heat across this area, here, push down on it, and just see if I can take some of these lines out by pushing across that area. Oh. You gotta watch what you're doing. Now I can do it there's two sides, right? There's that side and then there's this side here too. And I'm not sure how to do this these cross lines yet, but I'm sure I'll I'll sort it out. But you can see, you can read the screen still. And if I can get rid of the lines, just by pushing on them, I'm going to put the fine, I've got these attachments for my thing. And one of them is a really fine nozzle. The first thing I want to do is put my really fine nozzle on it. Now I don't mind about that, that retinal burn, that's fine. I'm okay with it. I 
I'm pretty sure that's some kind of an auto off feature that's on the system. Let me get this um, nozzle out. I'm going to chuck it on here. I'm going to see how many of these lines we can get rid of. Now, I've never had this on here before. Interesting, right? Doesn't want to go on there. I'm thinking there's a point where it will go. It's on. And we should be able to just go along here with this nozzle and remove those lines. See if we can get this to fire up again. Turn power on. I'm sitting, and you can't see what I'm doing, I'm setting my reworked nozzle to 350 Celsius set. Now this worked before, and now it's not working. Okay, rework is on. Done. Set. Yeah. If I pick it up, is there a button on here? Oh, you got to pick it up out of the thing. Alright, I've worked out how to use my soldering station. I've got it set on 350 degrees. We're still recording. What I haven't got is heat. Sorry, I've got heat. What I haven't got is power. It stinks. Let me get this to turn on. Alright, put it back in there. Okay, oh, I just blew something on this because it was working and now it's not. I'm thinking I might have loosened one of these up because this is pretty loose. Push that back in. It's in tight. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit that rework with the thing off and see if any of those lines will disappear for me. It's warm. I'm going to go along here. And I'm going to push it down. If I can get this to turn back on at some point. Ow. It's actually really hot on my thumb. I'm not sure that I'm supposed to do that with my thumb, but that's what I've been doing. 
See, these things are only glued on, as far as I'm aware. And it's definitely hot. I'll just put that back there and turn it off at the back. Just turning that off again. Alrighty, so let's have a look and see what's going on here. Did I, I didn't blow the fuse over there. I'm going to turn this around for a second. Not sure which way it goes, but I'm pretty sure it actually goes that way. I'm going to sit this on, this pad back on it. See whether we can get it to turn on. See, it would appear that it's completely dead. I'm going to unplug it, remove all the power. See if something will reset. Plug it back in. See if we can get it. Come on, fire up for me. Righto, well it doesn't want to fire up now. You can see that retinal burn in the screen where the guy put his coffee cup on it, see? Bloody idiot. Complete wanker. So this is two and a half thousand dollars worth of equipment here, this, this meter. And he didn't have enough respect for it. He, he had no respect for it. What I might do is I might try it in a different socket. Just give me a second. I'm going to put it up over here. Now let's hit the power button and see if we get something. Here we go. Right. Now you can see those lines are in it. I think they might disappear. I think if I start putting this back together properly, I think those lines will just disappear over, like, with a bit of pressure on this. I don't think that's going to stay. Now, I don't know where the... I've had this apart before. I've had the whole thing apart. See this backing plate here? This is a thermal black backing plate. It's protecting all this stuff. I think that if I tighten those two screws down, I'll get rid of the... I'm just going to try this. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to try something here. Now I've got a... Um, I've got a Phillips here. I'm just going to put my finger underneath that. I, I got up about an eighth of a turn on that one. And the same on that one. I got about an eighth of a turn. It's using the Phillips. So I think that we're half a short here. And I'm going to stop mucking with it. I'm just going to live with whatever I get and put it all back together. I'm taking the power off it. Now, I promised you guys a trick. A how to. What I'm going to do is clean this off of all the dust. Right, no dust on it. And using a bit of sticky tape, I'm going to take any, every little piece of dust I can find away. And then... And then... I'm going to put our cut piece of film that I've got somewhere which I have removed from the equation for whatever reason and put it back on the unit. So we're gonna we're gonna play with the film. We're gonna play with that. I'd reckon that by replacing this piece of film here, right, and you can see that retinal burn around the outside edges, by replacing that, 
we're going to solve 90% of the problems. So, I need to find, what did I do with it? Here it is. Right, so there's our cut piece. And I think it goes this way. So I cut it to size. Exactly to size for this, this piece of glass. I mark the sides. It's exactly that way. So now what we've got to do is clean that surface, peel the backing off this, see it's got backing on it, and put it on there without leaving any trace of any kind of dust or dirt on there. So that's what we're going to do. Be back in a sec.